It is said there was a time when the citizens of Sparta were not unlike any others in ancient Greece. After all, they shared a common culture, language, religion, and lifestyle, so there was really no way of being superior in anything. Herodotus even says Spartans were the worst governed people in all of Greece. That is, of course, until Sparta came under the influence of the legendary lawgiver Lycurgus. It was he who supposedly came up with the Spartan constitution, among which was the agoge, a system of education and training to be completed by every Spartan citizen. Most Greek cities also had a similar system in place, but it was Lycurgus's that was so revolutionary for its time that it allowed the Spartans to dominate everyone who dared meet them in the field, and in their prime, allowed them to stand undefeated for over 150 years. In this video, we will reveal the fascinating methods behind Lycurgus's innovative training system. Before we begin though, I'd like to introduce the sponsor of this video, Wondrium. They are a premier streaming service offering many entertaining and educational short and long videos, tutorials, how-tos, travelogues, and documentaries. You might have heard about The Great Courses Plus. Well now they have rebranded to Wondrium, and have more and better content to feed your thirst for knowledge. Wondrium is the place to find answers to everything you've ever wondered about, and more. Their content is always well researched and presented by leading experts in the field. We are currently watching Understanding Greek and Roman Technology, a series that covers the engineering behind many interesting buildings and mechanisms of the ancient Greeks and Romans. I like this series because it offers a deeper dive into a topic not commonly covered, and gives a clear understanding of how devices were made and the limitations that they had. Most screw pumps, for example, could not operate at an angle greater than 45 degrees, and so had limited uses. Wondrium adds new content to their platform every month, so you can rest assured to always have something new to learn. Click the link in the description or go to wondrium.com slash philaxemhistoria if you want to support our channel and start your free trial with Wondrium today. As Lycurgus gazed upon the lazy, mediocre citizens of Sparta, he decided that his people were in need of a different concept of upbringing. At the center of this idea was his belief that healthy, disciplined, able-bodied individuals are integral to a successful and functioning society. So his system was to be extended to every young Spartan citizen, male and female. And though the girls were excluded from the more rigorous and extreme system of the agoge, they were still expected to perform the same exercises as the boys, like fighting and running, as it was believed that both parents had to be in peak condition in order to produce the best possible offspring. To our modern eyes, Lycurgus' system represents an interesting and extreme experiment that can't be replicated today. What would happen if an entire community was isolated from the rest of the world and brought up through constant discipline, physical exercise, and resistance to struggle, with these being held as a social norm and reason for existence of every individual? In theory, this would produce a perfect society of tough individuals, with built-in qualities to show respect, endure the struggles of life, and always strive for perfection. But now let us see how Lycurgus implemented his idea into a real system, and if it achieved the intended results he wanted. For the boys, the system was divided into three categories. Children, adolescents, and young adults. The first category was very similar in idea to a modern boarding school. Young Spartans would leave their families to learn letters, music, poetry, singing, and sport. Other Greek city-states had a similar system, but relied on private pedagogues to teach their children. The Spartan system, on the other hand, was more communal, in which one man was chosen to be in charge of the boys as their paidonomos, or supervisor. This highly important role of bringing up the next generation of Spartans was only open to those who were eligible for election to the highest offices. It was the job of the supervisor to make sure young Spartans became loyal, resourceful, disciplined, and accustomed to extensive physical activity. Most importantly though, as the writer Plutarch nicely puts it, the agoge was a school of obedience. The supervisor was given power to punish the boys as he saw fit, and always commanded a group of older boys with whips to enforce his punishments. And to make sure the boys were never left without a supervisor, he allowed every citizen to take on his role when he wasn't around, and to order the boys to do whatever seemed appropriate. And yes, citizens were also allowed to punish the boys if they did anything wrong. For these reasons, the boys were accustomed to being respectful to everyone, and only spoke when spoken to. Xenophon even writes that the boys would always walk around with a low gaze, so as to not provoke anyone. This instillment of heavy discipline and respect was the first step of their training. 
When the boys of other Greek cities became teenagers, they were released by their pedagogues and private teachers into the world, and no one was in charge of them anymore. Spartan teenagers, however, only entered into their second stage of the agoge. Lycurgus recognized that it was in this age category, when going through puberty, that boys are the most adventurous and troublesome. So in keeping with his system, he enforced even more hardships and labor on the boys. They were to have only one cloak to stay warm all year, and had to walk barefoot in order to strengthen their feet. For Lycurgus believed that if their feet were properly accustomed, they could run faster and jump higher than anyone in footwear. At this age, they were also taught to fight with weapons and march collectively in full silence, under the rhythm of music. These silent marches would be used as a psychological weapon in battle, as most armies did not have the discipline to pull this off, and it would be offsetting for anyone to witness a seemingly emotionless and confident army face off against them. Interestingly, collective dancing, known as Pirikios, was also performed by the Spartans. These war dances were essentially repetitive compound movements in full arms and armor, which would strengthen countless muscles in the body and improve their overall balance and cohesion. As you can probably tell by now, Spartan training was not focused on extensive muscle growth of any kind. Instead, it was aimed at improving speed, agility, and muscle memory. So we could expect the average Spartan body to not be overly muscular, but instead nimble and lean, carrying just enough weight and muscle for optimal physical performance. Complementing this point is the fact that Spartan youths were never fully sated and were always hungry to some degree. Xenophon explains it was to encourage them to steal, but if any were caught stealing, they received a beating, not so much for the act of stealing, but for being caught doing it. This was all part of the second stage of their training, which ensured they were resourceful and had a high resistance to hunger and pain. Even their resistance to the cold was constantly tested, as they would bathe in the cold waters of the Eurotas River, under the concrete opinion that bathing in hot water made one a coward. The recurring theme in Lycurgus's system of rationing, training, and clothing Spartan youths was to make them more self-controlled in regard to their needs. In other words, it made the boys more contempt and indifferent with having less food, clothing, and personal possessions. This was in hopes that when a difficult situation inevitably does present itself, Spartan citizens would be more likely to recover and care for themselves, in comparison to other Greeks, who were accustomed to being provided with minor comforts and luxuries. To further discipline them, they were ordered when in public to hide their hands under their cloak, walk silently, and keep their eyes fixed on the ground. Xenophon even says you would be more likely to see a stone speak or a bronze statue turn its eyes than them, who would reserve their words for only when spoken to. When the boys grew into young men, Lycurgus focused the most time and effort on them, because he believed they were the city's greatest asset. In this stage, he especially focused on bringing out their sense of competitiveness and teamwork for he believed this was the best way to have the men push themselves to the limit of their abilities. In today's world, this can be seen in professional sports, and Lycurgus did a great job of implementing that mindset for the purpose of war. Xenophon explains how he did this. Out of all the young men, he would assign three strong leaders to each handpick the best 100 among themselves to be in their team. Each of the three leaders would also have to give a reason for each choice and rejection. Then, these leaders and their chosen groups would be pitted in various activities and battles against the very men they rejected. This resulted in a lot of competition, as each selected man wanted to prove that he belonged there, and each rejected one wanted to prove he was underestimated. We are told the contests that ensued were always fierce, with each man pushing himself for the victory of his group. Such intense competition even resulted in fistfights between the members of the groups, but were always separated and punished to remind each man that their inner contests should never be above their obedience to the law. We can imagine that their contests would extend even onto the battlefield, where although the group stand side by side, each would strive to outperform the other and be the last to flee. Unlike with the recruitment of the Roman legions, where men were selected based on stature and strength, it can be said that each Spartan, male or female, would be in great shape as they enter adulthood, and anyone slightly shorter or slimmer than the rest would know how to compensate in speed and vigor. We can safely say Lycurgus's system made sure that every citizen was a worthy recruit for when the need arose. When the Spartans grew out of their young adulthood, they were finally relieved of physical training. But Lycurgus ensured through social norms that their readiness for battle and pursuit of excellence carried on. For example, hunting remained the most popular leisure activity for them, 
as it stimulated a lot of the military hardships and gave them an urge to stay physically fit and mentally aware. Marriage was also a motivator, as only when Spartans were in peak condition were they allowed to marry and have children, as Lycurgus believed this would produce this strongest offspring. He took it even further by making it frowned upon for couples to spend too much time together, as it would negatively affect their competitive spirit. The last social norm, and by far the most brutal, was put in place to discourage cowardice. Anyone who fled a battle was subject to live in constant disgrace in all aspects of life. In any social gathering, they would have to give up their seats to younger men. In the streets, they would have to give way to everyone, and even in their own families, they would have to raise the women, and were not allowed to marry and have a family of their own. On top of all this, they would have to pay a fee for being a coward for as long as they live, and could be beaten if they ever tried to act as though they were innocent in public. Cowards had to endure the most dishonorable lives, which motivated many to rather die in battle than take their place. Do you think Lycurgus' system achieved his goal of molding perfect citizen soldiers, or were his methods a bit excessive and brutal? Let us know in the comments below. And if you think the Spartans were tough, check out the impressive training of the Roman legionaries, who would eventually conquer even the Spartans. And let us know which ancient training program produced the toughest of warriors. Also, consider joining our Patreons to become a part of our team that makes these videos possible, and get your name forever engraved in our videos. I hope to see you all in the next one.